Welcome to National Kidney Foundation Spring Clinical Meeting 2013. I'm Ken Arjaveri from EAJKD, the, the official blog of the American Journal of Kidney Disease. And I'm here with Dr. Calvin Darazadeh, Chief of Nephrology at UC uh, California Irvine. And he's here uh, presenting a very interesting poster on uh, the high protein diet and phosphorol treatment during dialysis. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your study? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, we felt uh, that we need to uh, address the uh, question of uh, the importance of nutritional status and nutritional support in dialysis patients, especially dialysis patients with so-called protein energy wasting, which used to be called malnutrition, including those with low serum albumin. As you know, low serum albumin remained, has remained one of the strongest predictors of survival in dialysis patients. And no matter what the etiology of low albumin is, we feel that nutritional support could help them. And among uh, those would be high protein diet. However, high protein intake uh, is uh, inherently associated with high phosphorus intake. So here we're looking at the challenge or the paradox. You tell your dialysis patients to eat more, to eat more protein, their serum phosphorus goes up. You tell them to eat less to control phosphorus, then it could be at the expense of uh, increasing risk of nutrition, of uh, compromising the nutrition status. Now, therefore, in this study, we felt that we should come up with a, 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 a reconciliation. Essentially, we, we uh, uh, decided to run this study in that we uh, randomize the allergies patients in two groups, those who receive the current uh, nutritional uh, support or nutritional recommendations and those who receive higher protein intake, including during dialysis. Uh, and at the same time, we control the phosphorus uh, by a relatively potent phosphorus binders. So, and we run this for a number of weeks and then we look at uh, the data and specifically here, we're looking at uh, the improvement or uh, in nutritional status while controlling some phosphorus. Right? So <clears throat> in this regard, we uh, invited 110 patients to participate in this study, 110 dialysis patients from several dialysis clinics, and we randomized them into two groups of 55 patients, and one group received uh, the uh, 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 conventional uh, dietary recommendations, and the other group received uh, recommendations about higher protein intake, including during the dialysis treatment. And we provided both groups with so-called lunch boxes, but the intervention group received high protein, 50 grams plus protein per meal during the dialysis treatment, and the control group received conventional nutrition plus a lunch box which had a, a salad inside, so low protein. And the high protein group also received, uh, also was given uh, phosphorus binder. In this case, we decided land from carbon. And that was as simple as I said. So we followed them for a number of weeks and then we looked at their uh, outcome measures. So, um, a choice of binders here, um, would, and you, you, you use land from carbon, uh, yes. would, would, would the study results hold true if you had chosen phosphorus? Yes, the, th thank you for the question. I, I, essentially, why we chose lanthanum carbonate, we, we felt that uh, uh, giving high protein intake uh, is, is, as I said, inherently associated with high phosphorus intake. And therefore, we uh, uh, were concerned with phosphorus control. We wanted to have a phosphorus binder that is known to be potent. So, our first choice was uh, aluminum hydroxide, believe it or not. Uh, the, our next one, in terms of potency, with the least uh, uh, pill burden, was lanthanum carbon. Of course, mm -hmm. we could have also chosen any other of uh, the binders, but we felt that uh, uh, lanthanum carbon is not used frequently in those in the dialysis clinics in that area. So it was a uh, also good choice in terms of uh, being introduced to the to the intervention group. Whereas the control group remained on the non lanthanum binders. On some occasions, when the control patients were on lantern, we asked them to uh, we, we offered them uh, a washout period, and then uh, asked the physician to switch them to a 
not land required. And, and so that was essentially a combination of uh, the frequency of land, uh, of, the, of the, the binder being used in, in that part of the country and the potency of the binder. Um, can you tell us the, the viewers uh, the results of the study and then what you would do uh, different uh, moving forward? Yes, actually the, the data were analyzed uh, uh, after the study was completed. Uh, out of 110 patients that were successfully recruited, uh, one of six uh, dialysis patients qualified to uh, have their data. Of course, the analysis was uh, intention to treat even if they had participated in the study only for a few weeks and didn't complete the study, included their data. Those four patients who were excluded out of 110 were those who did not uh, uh, stay in the study long enough to generate data. Otherwise, all 106, uh, the other 106 patients were included. And essentially, the results uh, were, were also based on uh, the uh, so-called uh, predefined criteria. And and uh, we we're, were looking at combined rise in some uh, albumin while maintaining phosphorus within the target range of 3.5 to 5.5 uh, milligrams per deciliter. And what we found here that is uh, written as the result uh, as, the, as the result statement of our poster is that combined rise in albumin while maintaining phosphorus in the target range was achieved in 25.5 of patients in the intervention group, those who receive high protein diet plus uh, protein binder, as compared to 9.8% of patients in the control group. And the p-value was 0 0.036. So that shows that uh, there was, uh, essentially there was a, a statistical significance, a significant difference between the two groups in terms of achieving slightly higher some health while maintaining phosphorus is still under control. And where do you uh, go from here? What further study would you perform to, uh, you know, whether using this sort of uh, data, uh, or would you change your practice uh, with the, with this data? Well, it's it's uh, of course it's our hope that uh, we can have a paradigm shifting uh, data in the best interest of patients' outcome. We feel that uh, uh, the community uh, hopefully will become more enthusiastic once these data also are. Uh, presented in form of published papers, a paper or papers. And we feel that uh, several things, several uh, messages coming out of this study. One is that high protein intake should not be avoided or prevented or compromised only for the sake of phosphorus control. We feel, according also to pre uh, recent epidemiological data, restricting diets just to control phosphorus or other things may cause more harm than health. And, and those still uh, have to be shown in other intervention studies, as you said, what is good for the future, that would be one of them to look at higher outcome. Uh, we feel that multi-center clinical trials are necessary to uh, verify our data, because this, even though this, this study was done in uh, uh, 10 dialysis clinics, we probably need larger studies, and more than 110 patients. We feel that provision of food, provision of meals during hemodialysis should be reconsidered. Many countries outside of the United States, the dialysis patients receive meals during dialysis. The United States is one of very few countries now where the dialysis patients don't receive. So then the concerns about meals during dialysis should also be addressed, including aspiration risk, hygiene, and other concerns. So these are things that we are hoping that could come out of this study as a result of this study being uh, published and being addressed and discussed. Well, thank you for a thought-provoking discussion. And uh, thank you for joining us on EHA Thinking. My pleasure.